If there's one thing you can count on from the Sega hacking community, it's plenty of content for Sonic the Hedgehog. Whether it's dropping new characters into Sonic's world, or making a completely new experience, we have no shortage of choice out there. While I could easily spend an hour on all the hacks available, I've decided to focus on just a handful of recommendations to get you started. If you have never played a Genesis hack before, you are in for quite a treat. Some of these offer up some real challenge and change so much, they feel like entirely new games. I've got 9 hacks for you, so let's get started. Let's start off with a personal favorite that I discovered a while back that really makes Sonic 3 & Knuckles the definitive Sonic experience. The group that did this hack brought together the two games better than any previous release. Right from the get-go you have multiple ways to play. You can set it to the original individual modes or tie it all together. From there you get options for difficulty, how it controls, and even a bunch of ways to handle the audio. From there it's the same great software it always was, just now a little more tailored to your preferences and tastes. Mods like these can be quite appealing if you don't want the core game changed heavily and are just looking for options and customizations. And in that context, this is one of the best. A big thank you to the team that put it together. Hopefully, Sega does something similar in the future. Metal Sonic Hyperdrive has been around for a bit, but it's still a good one to try. This is a side story involving a Metal Sonic clone created by Tails to stop the evil Dr. Robotnik's plans. It takes many liberties with the original game's stage layout and has a number of cool easter eggs and cameos. You can tell it's heavily inspired by Sonic CD visually, and I really dig the music. The boss fights are tougher and the emeralds are obtained differently, giving this one a bit of extra appeal. You can tell the motivation for this hack was simply to be a fun take on a tried and true formula. I think it succeeds at that, and is definitely worth a look. Be sure to read the hack page for important information on options, story, and how to play it. Sonic Mega Mix is a huge project that spans both the Genesis and Sega CD. It is a heavily redone hack that gives you new graphics, new powers, new stage layouts, and multiple characters. It's been around for a long time now, but has seen numerous updates and changes over the years. It's one of my favorite hacks available for Sonic, and really changes up the entire feel of, well, everything. It's faster and far more dynamic than anything you have played on the Genesis before regarding Sega's mascot. Recent updates have added a ton of changes, including musical edits and super forms. But it's the characters, gameplay, and presentation that'll keep you coming back for more. If you have a Sega CD, be sure to check it out there, but I find the Genesis hack to be far more stable. Sonic Classic Heroes is another one that has been around for a while, but has seen numerous changes and additions over the years. This one takes the team concept and brings it to the Genesis in all its glory. You can choose Team Sonic or Team Chaotix, bringing each character's special abilities along to help you out. Much like Sonic 2, you control a single member of a team while the other two follow, but you can switch to the other members at any time. It contains stages from both Sonic 1 and 2, power-ups from Sonic 3, and has a fully implemented save system for return play. The best part is, is that it has multi-tap support so three players can roll at once, so those family nights can be a real blast. 
Due to the sheer amount of stuff on the screen, this one does suffer from sprite flicker and slowdown, but it's tolerable for all the extra content and options it has. After playing this one, it really made you think Sega should have made the rubber banding and Knuckles Chaotix a power-up option and just let the tag team aspect drive the actual gameplay. It works well here and is highly recommended. Old Sonic 3D Blast here isn't my favorite game in the series, but that doesn't mean I can't appreciate a good hack for it. A few years back, the main programmer of the original game released Sonic 3D Blast Director's Cut, which offered improved gameplay, a save system, and a host of other additions. There's now an overworld map to see your progress and allow you to replay past stages. It's got a time challenge and level editor, and Super Sonic shows up once you have all those Chaos Emeralds. The core game is the same besides some additional bug fixes, but the quality of life changes really do make this one much more palatable. Just the tighter gameplay is enough to try it out for. If you were a fan of this, or always thought it needed a bit more to keep your attention, I think it's well worth a go. Now all we need is a hack to add more playable characters, and it'll be the game I always wanted it to be. Sonic Winter Adventures takes hold of the original games and adds all kinds of new gameplay. Homing attacks, super peel-outs, bosses that challenge you, and a speed and flow that really sets it apart among the original two-dimensional classics. I love the scrolling backgrounds with the winter theme, which usually means I break it out around Christmas time and give it some love. If you manage to finish it, there's some unlockables waiting for you as well. Sometimes a hack can be a winner just by giving you a cool theme and a few extra gameplay hooks, both of which Winter Adventures excels at. If you have always felt the Sonic games were far too easy, you really need to give Sonic Eraser a shot. This game is a complete reworking of the original and it's hard as hell. It uses a fully functional tutorial mode to set you up for the pain ahead, and I highly recommend you read every single one of them to get the most out of it. It uses a central hub to access its stages, and from there, you'll need to unlock them as you go. The gameplay here is just crazy. Explosions galore, pit and spike deaths at every turn, and some wild changes to the core gameplay and bonus stages. There's even storyboards to explain what's going on. It's not for the faint of heart, and I really only recommend Sonic Vets even give it a try. It's gonna chew up most of you like you've never touched a Sonic title in your lives. Sprite hacks are nothing new to Sonic, they're a dime a dozen really, but old Gex the Gecko here is quite special. Not only does it add the once proud 3DO mascot to Sonic's world, but it also fundamentally changes its gameplay and core objectives. Much like the original outing, you cannot defeat the stages without first finding the proper remote. Just dashing to the finish will get you nowhere. This allows you to actually explore this engine in ways you likely never have before. Along with that comes Gex's very own gameplay. Rings are replaced by flies, but here they act as a method of getting additional men instead of being your lifeblood. In that regard, you have hit points just like the 3DO version, as well as power-ups for projectiles, a tail whip, and a tail stomp. 
In other words, you cannot play this like a traditional Sonic game. Gex is nowhere near as fast and just trying to run through the stage usually results in constant death and disappointment. Slow down, explore, and play it like a traditional platformer and you'll have loads more fun. It's worth checking out if you appreciate the concept. The original Sonic always seemed to have a distinct lack of enemies, particularly in the later stages. I mean, I understand speed plays a big role in these opening areas, but it should have been a case where later stages were chock full of bad guys. Sonic the Blue Blur aims to correct that by not only loading the stages down with enemies, but changing the design and making you have to deal with them instead of just running roughshod through everybody. It may sound like a simple change, but it makes a difference and this one is well worth taking a look. It's old as sin, but I always appreciated the thought process here. It's challenging and makes you play it differently. That's a win in my book. Of course, I could keep on going for quite some time with Sonic Hack recommendations. There are a ton of the things. If you never sat down and gave them a shot, this one will get you started and send you well on your way to many more. I always thought it was cool to see different ideas play out in Sonic's universe. While I enjoyed the traditional games, seeing new stages, bosses, and power-ups is always a fun time. Heck, some of these are so well done, they could have been retail releases themselves. Sonic isn't the only Sega game that received hacks like these. Streets of Rage 2 is another one where people like to add additional content, and if you have any interest, I'd like to make a similar video for it. Support your Sega community wherever and whenever possible. These folks add new life to old games, keeping the hobby alive for old farts like me. I'm Sega Lord X. thank you guys for watching, and I will catch you next time.